Just to wrap up, here are some tips. Uh, RAID is not a backup. <laughs> I hear this all the time. Do you have a backup? I'll ask people, and they're like, I got RAID 5, I'm fine. No, you're not fine because you know what? RAID controllers mess up sometimes. The whole RAID can go. Sometimes there'll be a power surge and two of your drives will fail at once. A thief will come along and steal the whole RAID array. And then RAID's not protecting you from anything. RAID helps keep your data online in the event of a failure, but it's not a backup. RAID also does not protect you from file corruption or accidentally deleted files. You need to have fire drills. And I will tell you an embarrassing story about a past life when I worked at a very high-end and expensive hosting provider, and we hosted for thousands of really huge companies, a lot of Fortune 500 companies, and one of these Fortune 500 companies had some really important services hosted at our organization, and one of their computers failed. So we're the hosting provider. Of course, we rushed in with a replacement computer and went to restore their backup, and it wasn't there. And I talked to the backup guy, and I said, uh, you know, tell, help me out with the software. It doesn't seem to be finding the uh, backup. And he says, oh, that, that hasn't worked in like a couple of months. Seriously, <laughs> that's what he said. He knew it wasn't working. He just didn't get around to fixing it. He was busy with something else, I suppose. <laughs> Backups are one of those things where you don't notice if it breaks. You don't. Sometimes your backup drive fills up and there's no room for new backups. Sometimes there's a misconfiguration that causes it to be stored in the wrong format or encrypted with a key that you don't happen to have access to. Sometimes you'll install a new system and it won't get added to the backup system properly. The only way to test this is to have a fire drill. With a fire drill, you pretend something has failed, a file has been lost, and then you go and retrieve it. And if everything works, then you're good. If it doesn't work, you'll find it out and you'll know to fix it right away. You should also verify the integrity of data. Um, it, this used to happen with tapes more than it does with modern backup systems, but your data can get corrupted while it's sitting on the backup drive. So Make sure that the data integrity is intact and make sure that the files are recent too because you don't want to accidentally restore a month old backup and think that it's a recent backup. You also need to provide equal or better security for your backups and I have a story around this too. We had another failure and failures happen, right? But this time we actually had the backup so that was great news except when we restored the files, we restored them in a way that wasn't protected. And that's really not what the client was so upset about. He was upset that we had access to all of his unencrypted data because on his primary system, he'd gone through great measures to make sure that his files were secure. But when we restored them, we didn't maintain that security. So your backups need to be protected so that your backup operators can't read the data because you don't trust that guy, right? <laughs> Just like with systems administrators needing to have the access to data restricted, your backup operators shouldn't be able to read the data that they're backing up. It should be encrypted in some way, and it needs to be physically protected, at least to the amount of security that you require for the primary system. Because backup systems tend to have a mix of highly confidential data and less confidential data, I say protect it like every bit there is confidential because backup systems tend to have a mix of data from different confidential and not so confidential systems. I say treat backups like they're all highly confidential. The next is to automate everything and oh my god I have a lot of stories about backups but on one of my first jobs uh, we had a single tape drive for backups and it was my job to go in there and change the tape out every day and sometimes I forgot. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't remember that I was supposed to change the tapes until we had a failure, and then I went to restore it from a backup, and I had to say, I'm sorry, the most recent backup I have is a week old. So the person I was restoring the file for lost a week of work, and I was terribly embarrassed, and it's because it was a manual backup system, and really that's not a maintainable system. You cannot expect somebody to do anything on a regular basis. Backups need to be completely automated and that's one reason I'm glad tapes are gone. For the most part we're using big drives now and they have plenty of space and they'll back up even if you don't show up for work for weeks they'll just keep running and running and running. This also means that you can't count on Joe the backup operator to put the backup drives in the back of his truck and take it home once a month for your off-site recovery. If you rely on an outside organization who shows up at your door every day that counts as automating it. 
if you just tell some guy to do it on a regular basis, he's gonna forget, like Tony did many, many years ago, to do it, and then you're just out of luck. I also suggest if you are backing up across a network that you have a dedicated backup network, it can be a big mistake to have a single network for both regular transactions and backups because backups are big. If you back up a full system and it needs to send terabytes of data across the network, that could saturate the network for days. And if you have hundreds of systems, that backup network can be at full throttle indefinitely. And that can slow down your regular traffic. So especially for servers, what I'll do is I will plug two high-speed network adapters in and one of those network adapters goes to the front end. Clients that are connecting to the database or users who are browsing the web server, the other network adapter will go right to the backup network. This just separates them. It prevents the backup network from slowing down the primary network. You also need to back up your mobile devices and computers that people use at home that might have confidential data on them. Sometimes organizations will assign PCs to users and they only get backed up when they're actually in the office. You know, maybe they have a USB drive attached to it and whenever they put the PC in the docking station, that's when it gets backed up. If the user is on business trips for a month, they don't want to lose a month of data. So you need to find a way to back up their stuff across the network. And you know what? It's not gonna work to tell them to carry the USB drive with them and plug it in the hotel room. Why? because automate everything. <laughs> that guy's not gonna pull his hard drive out after a long day of work and plug it in. You have to automate that, which means you have to do it across the network. He probably will connect to the internet so he can at least check his Facebook. That's a good time to back it up. You can use online cloud-based backup services like Carbonite or others. I'm not endorsing Carbonite specifically, but they're a popular example. And they will just back up your computers across the network and keep it secure. That counts as an offline backup too.